Remember the Brady Bunch? I know I'm dating myself, but I don't care. You had the big kids going up against the little kids, and then the middle kids would come along, and it's none of their business, and then suddenly everybody would get into an entangled mess and a fresh round of trouble. On today's ETF Battles, we're going to borrow from that sibling rivalry and get crazy. We've got an ETF triple header between funds tracking U.S. large caps going up against mid caps and small caps. So which equity sibling has it right? Stick around for the answer. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge, and it's great to have you along for the ride. And speaking of ride, we've reached the end of the road for Season 3 of ETF Battles. And let us know how you've enjoyed this year's 52 episodes. The full playlist is in the description section below. Feel free to binge watch. I want to hear from you. What was your favorite episode? What was your favorite battle? Again, hit the comment section below or find us on Twitter at ETF Guide. It was really a momentous year for us. Not only did we add Amazon Fire TV and Roku as distribution partners, but we also crossed above 21,000 YouTube subscribers with over 2.5 million views. So thank you so much to all of you for watching our originals. And in case you forgot, the chief purpose of everything we do on this channel and on this program is to help you have a profitable investment outcome. And despite difficult market conditions this year, it's a heavy responsibility that we do not shirk or take lightly. Today's ETF battle was requested by Black Mamba. I think somebody's a Kobe Bryant fan. Anyway, he wanted to see this sibling rivalry of State Street Global ETFs tracking large, mid, and small company stocks. We've got the granddaddy, SPY, going up against the little kids, MDY and Baby little baby sister, SLY. Judging today's high stakes contest is Mike Akins at ETF Action and Dave Krinsis at ETF Portfolio Management. Guys, welcome back. Great to see you. Hey guys, happy anniversary. Three years. Time flies when you're watching ETF battles. Hey guys, it's great to be here. Ron, thanks for having me. So our four battle categories for today's showdown is cost, exposure strategy, performance, and our mystery category. Of course, mystery is where you, our judges, get to pick a single factor or multiple factors that you feel are material to support your analysis. I've got the scorekeeping choice, and we're going to run down to these four battle categories one at a time. And each of our judges will be given an opportunity to give us their overall battle winner, or they can opt for a split decision or nominate wild cards. It's completely up to them. Keep in mind, none of the battle outcomes on this program are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or any of our judges. Our first category is cost. Mike, please get us started. All right. So we're in like the big boy leagues of liquidity with these three products, SPY, MDY, and SLY. Um, break down the S&P 1500, right? The s Spy is the S&P 500, MDY is the S&P 400 mid cap, and Sly is the S&P 600 small cap. Um, they're all super liquid. Um, expense ratio wise though, um, I mean, Spy is gonna be the cheapest of the three be cover, co covering the large cap, but you can do cheaper in all three categories. Um, IVV for Spy, IJH for MDY, or IJR for Sly. It really comes down to how you're using them. Is it a liquidity in and out tactically, or is it a buy and hold? If it's buy and hold, expense ratio is more important. If it's um, tactical, then you want to think about uh, liquidity. Um, in this case, I got no winner. Um, they're all great vehicles. They're all low cost. They're different enough where you can't go head to head. Um, I just would say those wild cards in there are a cheaper way if this is a long-term allocation, which I will get into as the battle goes on. Thank you, Mike. You're up next. Dave, give us your analysis on cost. Well, thank you to Black Mamba for this battle. Uh, in this U.S. equity battle, large cap versus mid cap versus small cap, we have three passive diversified U.S. equity funds, which by themselves are aggressive growth allocations. And these ultra low cost expense ratios range from nine to 22 basis points. So they are super cheap. But as Mike mentioned, there is cheaper. And now clearly the cost difference is not material given other factors. However, the S&P has 26% in information tech, which is more than double the other two. 
And since machine learning and artificial intelligence are the leading long-term trends, I'll give the win on cost to wildcard VOO because VOO is an S&P 500 ETF with an expense ratio lower than SPY. That takes us next to exposure strategy, which our judges have already alluded to, but they're going to deepen our understanding of this. So Dave, you're up. Give us your take. Yeah. So exposure, again, uh, the S&P 500 gives you 26% in tech, double the exposure in small or mid cap. And over the long term, large cap tech may continue to outperform. So I give the exposure win to S&P wildcard ETF. Boo. Thank you very much. Mike, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to exposure strategy? I like them all. I think you should have a little bit of all these in your, in your, in your long-term portfolio allocation. Um, but I think that brings a good opportunity to talk about. There's a product called SPTM out there. Total market products are extremely popular. SPTM is the S&P 1500. Um, but I don't want you to use it because it's a market cap weighted product. And as a result, you are significantly underweight mid cap and small cap. And here's the thing. Um, if there's ever an example where more risk equals more returns, when you talk about size in the market, this is where it exists. If you look at SPY versus MDY versus SLY, you're going to see SLY outperforms over the longest time period because it has more risk. MDY next because it has a little bit more risk than SPY and then SPY last. That is just simple facts. It really can't be argued in the market over any time period. Um, and to that extent, I think when you're building a portfolio, you should be thinking about how much mid cap and small cap you want relative to your risk tolerance and your time horizon. And buying a total market cap doesn't allow you to do that. Tactically putting together these three products does. Um, on a winning perspective right now, I think you're gonna win with all three, but allocate to what is right for your time in the market and your risk tolerance. Um, and I think it's a, it's a long-term success strategy. So I've got no winner. Other than my winner here is build a portfolio that matches your needs. Don't just buy an off the shelf total market. Understood. We appreciate that. That takes us next to performance. So Mike, you've already given us kind of a, a taste of what's to come in terms of performance, but give us your overall take. Which of these three ETFs stands out? Sly wins long-term, MDY is second, and SPY is third. It's a risk reward game. As long as you're in it for the long haul, Sly is going to give you a little bit more return over the full market cycle. It's going to come with more volatility, bigger drawdowns, stay the course. It's going to have higher performance. It's it's that simple when you're kind of looking at these three products of the S&P um, put together. They're great allocation vehicles. And the thing to do is to mix and match your returns, but I'll leave it at that. So Sly is my winner, followed by MDY, followed by SPY. Thank you, Mike. Dave, you're up next. Give us your take on performance. Well, performance is always the bottom line. And this past decade, we all know the extra tech and large cap outperformed, although mid cap did win short term. Uh, this data chart shows that over the past decade, uh, SPY and VU both returned 13% annualized and fell by 14% over the past 12 months. Mid cap fell by 10% this past year. And to protect principal, our active strategies have mainly been in cash and small allocations to energy. We even shifted to 100% cash at times in the bear market. Now, energy was among the worst sectors in the past decade, and we've talked about, we've spoken about XLE all year. XLE actually gained 55% over the past 12 months, and this graph shows that energy has now outperformed over the past three years, with XLE returning 67%, double the S&P return. So for short-term aggressive growth performance, I give the win to large cap energy wildcard XLE once again. And in its absence here, I give the win to S&P 500 wildcard VU. Thank you very much, Dave. Now this takes us next to the mystery battle category where our judges can pick a single factor or multiple factors to make their analysis that much more persuasive and to the point. So Dave, what is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? So my mystery category is never a mystery because portfolio management is all about position size. And SPY, MDY, and SLY could all be very large holdings in our active strategies and much larger than energy. But U.S. equity indexes of all sizes have been out of favor recently. So I give the position weighting win in this bear market to cash and wildcard energy XLE. 
And in their absence, I give the win to S&P 500 wildcard Voodoo. Mike, you're up next. What is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? Uh, so I'll stick with positioning size as my mystery battle along with Dave uh, to go that that route, but very different um, in, in application in the sense that I think, you know, when building a portfolio, um, total market ETFs, um, they're sold as a one stop fits all. Um, I don't believe that is true. I believe they're woefully underweight um, on the size spectrum. And I think that this is an opportunity to have that discussion to say, look, you need to think about allocations per your risk tolerance, your time horizon. SPY, MDY, and SLY are great building blocks, but you can manage that to your expectations. Um, you extend out 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, you start seeing the material change. Yes, the last decade, there was this tech outlying situation. You'll always see that decade before that, it was financials, decade before that, it was energy. Over the long term, that size allocation does um, pull its head out um, and as become the leader. And I think that playing that with your risk tolerance, your age and your time horizon makes all the sense in the world. My winner in this category is all of the above and allocated to fit your, your risk tolerance and your time horizon. That takes us to the part of the show where our judges can give us their overall battle winner. So Mike, give it to us. I think these are all great products. They're great building blocks. That's what the ETF market's all about. Um, being able to create a portfolio that best meets your needs. It's why they're so popular. It's why they continue to grow. Despite um, this horrible market we've had, we're seeing re almost record inflows again, shortly shy of last year, but incredible inflows in the face of all other types of products seeing outflows. Um, so my, my winner in here is really just a nod to the ETF space as a whole, as a very... Um, a more efficient vehicle for allocating and building portfolios. And these three ETFs in today's lineup are some of the granddaddies of them all and prime examples of how it should work. So everybody's a winner today. Dave, your final chance to win with your overall winner? Well, to recap this U.S. equity size battle, diversification by size didn't help much in this bear market. Given the weakness in equities, we raised cash to protect principal, and in my opinion, inflation and Fed tightening still favor extra cash and energy and certain active trend following exposure, although that can all change very quickly. Overall, 2022 proved that index investing can be far more dangerous than people realize, and history shows that investors should expect the unexpected and be prepared to protect principal when needed. So I call this bear market equity battle, a win for cash and large cap energy wildcard XLE. And in their absence, I call it a win for S&P 500 wildcard VU. Well, our judges have spoken and according to my battle scorecard, man, this is a this is like the craziest split decision of all time. I mean, we got like a five-way split decision between maybe a six-way split decision. I've lost count, folks. And I'm the <laughs> scorekeeper. This is my chief responsibility not to screw this up. But listen, SLY, MDY, SPY, VOO all got strong votes and endorsements. And of course, Dave mentioning his wildcard XLE and cash as tactical uh, enhancements. But when you get to the bottom line of it, I think as Mike had mentioned, you know, th that's what you're looking for is customized equity exposure that you get when you have three separate ETFs covering a different part of the equity market whether it's large, mid, or small cap, versus a all-market ETF approach, which if you look underneath the hood, those ETFs tend to weight very heavily towards the bigger companies while underweighting the smaller and mid-cap companies where much of your future growth will probably come from. And I don't know if you're a long-term investor, that's something you necessarily want to have. So great points by all of our judges, uh, Dave and Mike. And before we go, I want to give you guys one final opportunity to, to, to give us your one big investing lesson or takeaway from 2022. Let's start with you, Dave. You know, the big investment lesson of 22 is a reminder, don't fight the Fed. Rising interest rates and quantitative tightening are not favorable to high multiple aggressive growth tech stocks. Protecting principal is always the top priority, and having extra risk control in bear markets enables us to be more invested in bull markets. 
Also, leveraged ETFs delivered once again. The inverse leveraged ETFs for the S&P and NASDAQ 100 were important hedging tools. And the two times energy ETF symbol ERX performed very well. And this chart shows that even with two market crashes this past decade, the three times S&P 500 ETF symbol SPXL is still up over 900% and almost four times the unlevered S&P. So levered ETFs are still the future of investing, in my opinion, just go very slowly, take baby steps, and only use levered ETFs if you're making money. Thank you, Dave. Mike, you're up. Give us your one big investing lesson or takeaway from 2022. Okay. I mean, I think the biggest thing is diversification, and but actually understanding diversification. Um, just give you a list of the most commonly held um, asset classes, if you will. We'll call bucket asset classes broadly saying, you know, U.S. large cap, mid cap, small cap, developed markets X U.S., emerging markets, REITs, bonds, long term, short term. You name the asset class that's popular in portfolio construction, and you're going to find one thing. Every single one of them are negatively correlated to the dollar. Um, and if you're not co cognizant of that, it's been a long time where we've had a strong dollar environment, but there are certain things like managed futures um, or just owning the dollar itself that can make a big difference in these types of markets. And it's something to think about that you got to make sure you're truly diversified. Managed futures were very popular a long time ago for a reason for markets like this. Um, so understanding that and staying the course, um, knowing what, diversification means um, and knowing that, you know, where your weaknesses are in a portfolio. And I think the dollar gave us a good example of that. It's a good um, example of being like, if the dollar is strong, 99% of portfolio building tools are down. And it's been that way in the history. We, we were reminded of it again this year. You know, what is, do you have a true diversifier in your portfolio? That's a big uh, lesson to take away. Maybe now is not the time to add. Maybe we've had that run its course, but I, if you know me, you listen to what I say. I like to stay diversified, um, stay the course in all of my, my buckets. And I think the dollar gave us that good reminder, a good lesson for the year. And then I just have to be on record as saying I completely disagree that leverage ETFs are the future. Well, thank you, judges, for your excellent work on ETF battles in 2022. I look forward to seeing you both on the other side of the new year. 2023 is coming, so don't miss our upcoming season four of ETF battles. It's going to be epic. In the meantime, keep your awesome ETF battle requests coming. I'm Ron DeLegge with ETF Guide TV. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in 2023 for season four. Happy holidays. Thanks, guys. Happy New Year, everyone.